so therefore my question saying can you change your metabolism yeah yeah so so let's yeah um <clears throat> right well, i'm going to spin that around a little bit and i would say it's not a matter of people will say i need to change my metabolism and they will, when they say that they will they will think i need to burn more energy i need a higher metabolic rate and and what i'm saying is don't think of it that way if you want to change your metabolism change the fuel you're bur you're burning not the rate at which you're burning it because that appears to be the better predictor and that's really good news because, like for example in a woman a, in in the average lifespan of a woman the time of her absolute highest metabolic rate will be when she's pregnant and ironically that's when she's gaining the most fat um, of, of of you know her in in a typical kind of young premenopausal woman's life who's having babies a, a pregnant woman has a metabolic rate that is remarkably high her body is working a lot it's working overtime to grow her own tissue but also to help the baby grow she's giving that energy to the baby and again paradoxically she's gaining more fat so it's not a matter of metabolic rate that we when we talk about changing our metabolism it's a matter of changing the fuel we use and again at any moment the human hybrid metabolic engine is burning fats and glucose or, or, or blood sugar and we don't want to be sugar burners because those are the people who gain the most weight. We want to be fat burners. And insulin is the hormone that dictates the fuel we use. I cannot, it might seem, sometimes I say that and I worry that people think I'm being a little, um, a bit of a showman in emphasizing it like that, but it, it really couldn't be more accurate. Insulin dictates the fuel the body is using and, and the fuel every cell is using. If insulin is high, the body is in sugar burning mode. If insulin is low, the body has no choice. It is in fat burning mode. Now I'm not speaking about the metabolic rate, which insulin actually does change a little. When insulin's high, metabolic rate goes down. When insulin's low, metabolic rate goes up. But I just said metabolic rate doesn't really matter and I'm gonna stick to it. So let's put metabolic rate to the side. Metabolic fuel is the discussion. Again, if insulin is high, the body's in sugar burning mode. Those are the people who gain the most weight over 10 years, according to the Baltimore study. If insulin is low, fat burning is up. And those are the people who gain the least amount of weight or the most likely to not gain any over 10 years. That's where we want to be. And the good news is we can change our insulin levels immediately. Everyone listening, they could change their next meal. And then in four hours from now, their insulin level would be significantly lower than it was before. Well, they will be in fat burning. I'm sure everyone has heard of, of um, uh, uh, the keto diet or ke uh, ketogenesis or the ketogenic diet. That is simply a state of fat burning. Basically, and Caroline, I hate to hijack this topic. I promise I'll end really shortly. But when insulin is low, the body is in a state of fat burning. And, if, and when insulin stays low for around 16 to 20 hours, it is in such a high state of fat burning that it's almost like it's burning, the body is burning more fat than it actually needs to burn. So here was the normal metabolic demand right here. And, and because insulin was low, fat burning went beyond that, what the body actually needed. Well, one way of looking at ketones is that this little excess fat burning is the production of ketones. Ketones are simply pieces of burning fat, if you will. That's not technically accurate, but, but it's closer than most people would think that we're taking a big fat molecule this big long chain of little carbon atoms linked together and we're chopping them apart. Normally, as we chop it apart, that those little bits that are chopped go to be like burned to nothing. And we use that for energy. However, when insulin is low, we're burning too much or we're breaking the fat apart too much. And we start making ketones from those little pieces that we've chopped up from the fat molecule. So ketones are simply pieces of burned fat. So as much as people will either vilify or adore the ketogenic diet, that really is all that it is. It is a state of prolonged fat burning where you're burning so much fat that you're making ketones from that fat. Okay. So diet is key, sugar is the enemy. Yes, diet is key and refined starches are, are the enemy, whether it's sugar or juice or, or bread or crackers or chips. All of those refined starches, which will increase our insulin levels dramatically and keep them elevated for two or three or four hours, depending on the person, that whole time insulin is elevated, we have no choice but to be in sugar burning mode. And that is a phenomenon. There, or there's another idea here 
um, called metabolic inflexibility. So metabolic flexibility is this term that we use in the metabolic realm to refer to people who, the, the healthy people who will eat a meal and they will be in sugar burning mode because they eat, they eat a meal that has starches in it. They go to sugar burning mode because insulin's high. And then a couple hours later, they've digested this, insulin comes down, they go back to fat burning mode. That's metabolic flexibility where we want to be. These are the people that are insulin sensitive. Insulin works well. They eat, insulin comes up, insulin goes down, having lowered the glucose levels in the blood and the body goes back to fat burning. When people have metabolic inflexibility, their insulin levels are always elevated. This is just insulin resistance, which is the most common disorder in the world. Um, in fact, not, um, pardon the shameless plug to your group, anyone who hasn't get my book, Why We Get Sick, it's all about insulin resistance, but insulin resistance is a state of chronically elevated insulin and the body, um, now, even, now they don't have any flexibility. They eat a meal, they're in sugar burning mode and even 10 hours later, they're still in sugar burning mode. They don't shift back, they're not flexible enough to get back into fat burning. Well, the key is control the carbohydrates because carbohydrates are the foods that are going to spike your insulin the most. And if you're being smart about them, eating fruits and vegetables more than bread and cereal and crackers, then you're going to help your insulin stay low. Uh, and, and fat and protein don't have an insulin effect. Um, so those are the ones to focus on. And then you're in fat burning mode.